Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. and welcome back to Printer's Corner. I've got some fresh questions and answers for you on the questions that I'm getting from social media. If you want to have your question answered a little bit more in depth, then you can write hashtag Printer's Corner and I'll try and pick that up for a future episode. Also, if you want to skip ahead in the timeline underneath the video to see where I answer your question, feel free to skip ahead and just get the information that you need or stick around and you might learn something that you didn't know you needed to know. In general, we've got three questions today. We've got a question about neck labels, we've got about tags for the garment decorators, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about heat presses, specifically for neck labels. Our first question today is from Don Cruzy, and they've asked, what type of print is that for the inside neck labels? We have done lots of different methods for printing inside neck labels and sometimes for customers we might even do plus or transfers because we're only needing to print a couple of sheets. We can do it very custom on site, not having to wait around or anything. We've also tried screen printing directly into the shirt and that can work really well as well. That's definitely an option, especially if they need to change details and colors a lot. However, in our videos and the, the method that we use now from ongoing is we use ultra color transfers. These are basically like this. We get them on a sheet. We get the transfers on a big sheet like this. And I'm not sure if you can see through, but we've got white ones on here. And these are for our own brand, Blind Maggot. And this is because our Blind Maggot shirts all have exactly the same neck label in them, regardless of what the design is. We have some white ones, and then on the top here, we've actually chopped out the black ones that we used as well. But you could make these multicolor because they're ultra colors. And what an ultra color is, is kind of like a relatively new technology. It's not really a transfer, it's you're just taking the ink and a very slight bit of gluey powder and putting that on the shirt. I actually went to the Target Transfers factory and I didn't even get to see the machine, which I'm a bit... Oh, I'm going to see that machine at some point, but um, we did a whole in-depth video about these transfers and we've done YouTube videos about them as well. But basically it's a screen printed underbase and then some kind of like digital print on top. And it just means that you can change the color up and they can store in the drawer and you can chop them and just heat press them on your garments as and when you need them. And they're actually quite easy to do. So it's 120 degrees for 12 seconds and that's like really quickly applied. So that is easier if you have your own brand because you don't have to set up a screen if you've only sold like a handful of shirts. You can just chop these up as and when you need them, quickly heat press them and it's much, much easier. I'm gonna show you what that looks like on an actual t-shirt. So we've got one of our Blind Maggot shirts here. Let's get this off. There you go. That's one that we've actually heat pressed. And we even like, we thought we were pushing the boundaries a little bit with our registered sign, but it comes off really easily. It's, um, I mean, it's printed on there really well. Another advantage is that if you're printing on light colored garments, you'd often see the neck label shining through the other side. You can see it. Whereas on this, you can't see it. And that's because the transfer is actually the ink is sitting on the very surface of the garment. So that's really, really handy, um, versatile, quick, etc., etc. So that's, that's the method that we use. The next question is what's real and what's not, but they've taken all the A's out. And they've said, how do you find t-shirts without tags and just the sizes? I think this is a really big topic because a lot of people want the t-shirts to look like their own brand has actually gone out and got these t-shirts. So having rebrandable tags is really, really handy. But a lot of the blanks that you get, you have to like either tear away their tag. Who wants your own brand and then seeing that who the manufacturer is? Um, it's never been something that I wanted for mine. So some of them have tearaways. But the problem with the tearaways are they're often on the cheaper garments, which means the stitching isn't as good sometimes. So when you tear away the actual label, you might even just rip a little hole in the shirt. And then as a screen printer, that's really irritating because I can't even sew on a button and I'm not gonna sit there 
sewing up shirts because the tearaway label has caused a hole in them. And I might have just printed that shirt really well as well. So I stay away from those. There's also even brands who sew in a permanent label, but I would never choose those as well. So I go for Stanley Stella. Um, I'm a really huge advocate for this brand anyway, because they've got loads of credentials, like being like Vigo and Ecotex and everything you can think of. They've also thought about what garment decorators want and what brand owners want. So they just have the size label that you're asking about just there. They have this completely blank. There's no tear away, which is just quicker. And um, because it's to the side there, I can keep my logo exactly the same, regardless of what size t-shirt I'm decorating. So that means I don't have to pick like a, a small or a medium or an XL or accidentally put an XL on an XXL or anything confusing like that. I can put exactly the same logo on all of them. And then the label there just shows what the size is. And that's worked really well in retail because we sell them on our market stall and in a shop. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what I would do because uh, Stanley Stella are trying to think about it being fashionable and practical for garment decorators because they're producing these for us specifically. That's hopefully answered that part of the question. If you're actually asking where do I physically get those shirts from, I use a wholesaler in the UK, normally Rallowise, or I've actually got an account directly with Stanley Stella and thankfully they've got their warehouse in the UK now so we can get a hold of them a little bit easier. If you're asking a garment decorator for the shirts, it's often best to allow them to gather the shirts for you because they might have better rates. They'll know about inventory and they often just want to use the shirts that they've provided and checked and counted. My third question for today is from Prints and Promotions. They're asking, hey, what size plaited is that for the heat press? Is it suitable for caps? In the video, there was this little baby platen, this little baby platen here. On our heat press, we can have interchangeable bottom platens, which is really, really handy. And we've mainly just used two. So we use the big one for t-shirts or canvas bags or most day-to-day -day things. But if we're just doing neck labels, we'll use this one. And I'm pretty sure it's called the 10 by 10 and it refers to this squidgy bit here being 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And um, it just quickly pops in. The advantage of that is that you don't really wanna to have to dress the whole t-shirt on your platen when you're heat pressing just the neck label because you might not wanna press over your printed part of the shirt again, but you quickly dress. It's much easier when it's attached to a heat press, but you can quickly dress the part of the shirt that you want to apply the pressure to and the heat like that quickly put the label on and then you can lift this off without interfering with the with the transfer because they are cold or like very like slightly warm peel so you just want to like have the the transfer on there be quite delicate about it put it to one side and not interfere with it too much so these are really handy they also have those platens where they've got the main body and then they've got the little neck label section as well so i played with those as well when we went to visit target transfers and there's a really in-depth video there where they show all the different presses for all the different applications but i still think my auto open is the most versatile that i found but there's a second part to that question which is is it suitable for caps so i don't think this particular pattern is really suitable for caps because you're trying to put transfers on that very curved, unique surface of the front of the cap normally. I know you're going for the sides as well. So yeah, if it was like on the side of the cap, you might be able to use this. Tell me in the comments if you use this pattern for heat pressing caps. I think really what they want to go for is something like the 360 IQ, which is like my dream press. It's the one bit of kit that I want next. And it's really good because it's shaped, the, the actual heating element part is shaped in the profile of a cap. And it's also two, so it's heated from the bottom and the top. So there's two heating elements compressing on the cap. That means that you can get the heat all the way through something like a thick badge and you can melt the adhesive onto the cap directly instead of struggling or having press marks or you know anything like that. The, the 360 is the cap press. So if you're doing a lot of that, that's the one you need. 
I also think it's relatively versatile the other way around. So you can use the 360 for putting on like left chest badges, small little impressions and things. So I would definitely go for that one instead of this one and trying to make this one work for caps because it's definitely not designed for that. So to round up our main question in this week's episode about which is the best unbranded t-shirt for garment decorators, I have to say it's Stanley Stella and almost anything that they produce is specifically designed for garment decorators. So they're the ones that we use. Hopefully I've gone into enough detail for your answers, but if I haven't, keep writing comments and I'll try and answer again or use the hashtag printers corner for me to answer your question in a future video.